I want to talk to you about the banks and everything else that we typically talk sure. about. But first, let's get into this report. And it, it is called Tragedy of the Commons, launching ratings on the top 15 states. Why did you think it was important to launch ratings on the states? Well, it's a, uh, this is a, uh, uh, an iteration of something we've been working on for two years. So at, after the credit crisis or within the credit crisis, we realized, uh, we believed that the economy would recover with regional strengths and weaken, weaknesses. So we've done work on this for two years now. This has been, this, I haven't slept for days, this has been the most exhaustive uh, piece on the states. There had to be consequence. So um, last, uh, when I was on your, sh on your show in April, uh, we talked about how we thought there would be between one and two million job cuts at the state and local level. Um, and that's, in fact, has been a huge uh, uh, headwind for the economy. Getting in closer into the states, we looked around and there was nothing available to tell you about this process of state budgeting, how monies are transferred. It reminded me, the state situation reminded me so much of the banks pre-crisis that um, we just kept working at it. And we couldn't find anything that gave us a clear story. We couldn't find any information that was transparent. And so we did it ourselves. So in other words, you believe that the fiscal challenges facing the states right now could be the next systemic risk for the financial system and for the economy. There's no doubt about it. And the similarities between the states and the banks are extreme to the extent that um, the states have been spending dramatically, growing leverage dramatically. Muni debt has doubled since 2000, but spending has also grown way faster than revenue. So spending in the last eight, uh, from 2000 to 2008, grew 60 percent, while revenues grew 45 percent. Well, states have to have constitutionally balanced budgets. So how do they do this? Off balance sheet, uh, off balance sheet leverage so in terms similar. of pension funding. So I mean, similar to the banks. Similar is incredible. And then how about how, uh, the compensation schemes? So. Uh, you borrow from future dollars to, you know, benefit the present. It's basically, you know, generational, you know, uh, robbery, and that's the, the bonus is to get reelected. So you hire state jobs, you 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 uh, uh, increase spending on local um, programs, and that all gets you. Uh, get, that's all gets you elected. Talk to me about how the rating system works for the the uh, the state and what this does from an investment standpoint. How do I want to invest? and look at these ratings and make my decisions in terms of buying the debt, buying into some of those okay. things. So when we looked at how the rating agencies, um, S&P, Moody's, are looking at the states, we couldn't figure out what influenced their ratings. There was no quantitative, seemingly no quantitative analysis. The ratings were very vague. Our ratings are very quantitatively based. So we look at the economic health. We look at the fiscal health, most importantly. How in debt is the state? Um, how uh, we look at tax flexibility. New York as an example, has the highest tax burden per capita in the country. So their flexibility on taxes, of raising taxes, are, are you know, are, is limited. limited. So they would rank very poorly on that basis. What uh, about California, which which you've got a high up in terms of a negative rating? I mean, California, uh, there's no doubt about it, is the is the worst state um, because they have rated pension plans. They've got the largest uh, 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 budget gap. Um, they've increased spending dramatically, and most importantly, it's. 20, over 20 percent of the housing market. So we believe that there will be another uh, double dip in housing and California's revenues are really going to uh, continue to suffer. In terms of the best state, you've got Washington. Uh... No, the best state is actually Texas okay. by a mile. Tell me so, why. Well, I think uh, you can understand why they would be, uh, they would come into the recession better position. They went through the oil crisis in, um, during the 80s. So they've been a very conservative state. This is a very um, uh, low government uh, 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 state. State, you know, anti-government state. So government spending small is low. Government. Small government. Thank you. Small low government taxes. State, low taxes. Um, their pension funds are fully funded. Housing is not an issue in Texas. They've got great, um, uh, great population trends. Great employment. Virginia is also positive. Virginia is also positive for all the same reasons. What does this mean from an investment standpoint, Meredith? How do I want to trade this? Well, I think um, you know this is a thoughtful, long-term structural piece. I think you have to. You know, I, I cover the banks for a living. So you have to look at the states and the risks that the state po the states pose because I think the, that the uh, crisis with the states will result in an attempt at least for the third near trillion dollar bailout. I mean that has consequences on the dollar. That has consequences. I mean on just about everything. It certainly has consequences on the U.S. recovery. So it's a macro call, and you can also play micro in terms of what's going to happen. We don't think that there's a risk with the state debt service. We very much think there's a risk with the municipal local debt service. Which is why I think this is such an important
important report that, that you're out uh, with uh, today for your clients or last night for your clients. Let me transition into the banking sector right now. Is the banking sector well capitalized at this point? Let's talk about your last call, the last time you were on the program, to talk about all of these layoffs coming in the financial yeah. services sector. How bad do you think it gets? Well, I think you know the U.S. banks have capitalized themselves very well. So the U.S. banks, uh, when you look at a double dip in housing, um, are going to be better positioned. I think the states are the, going to be the ones who really are not prepared and really suffer from a double dip in housing. Um, but I think from an investment vehicle for the banks, um, a big portion, the majority of the portion of the uh, of the profit center of the banks for the last year has been Wall Street revenues. And Wall Street revenues are horrible right now. Um, and I think so you go through your third year of really basically weak earnings um, and the banks are well overstaffed. So. So, so here we are looking at the end of the third quarter. What are you expecting from banking earnings in the, when we get these numbers in the next couple of weeks? Um, I think that you're going to see, uh, you know, Jeffries reported last week and Jeffries uh, described the trading environment as painfully slow. You're going to see more of that. I think you're going to see at least a 25 percent sequential decline in equity trading. Um, um, you know, some banks will do better um, than others in terms of investment banking, um, but very, very weak, very low single-digit ROEs for the banks. So those banks that have heavy trading operations, obviously the ones you want to avoid. Yeah. Uh, well, what I would say, absolutely. Um, what I would say also is that this quarter is going to be unique for the banks because this will be their last quarter where they can dodge the credit bullet. And by that, I mean with housing. Case Shiller came out today, and it was not a good number, but not a bad number. As the Case Shiller uh, index is calculated it's a lagged rolling um, a, a rolling lagged average so um, we think that uh, October this will be after the banks report you'll see a really ugly case Schiller number which means the fourth quarter is going to be very very tough for the banks are there any banks you would buy going into the earnings season in the fourth quarter uh, no no you want to sell them here um, it, it the banks have been all over the place so to say at this point in time the banks are off a, l a little bit I don't I don't think there's any way to make money on the banks but in terms of the regional banks for this for you know, for the state's reason alone are in an impossible situation I would absolutely sell the regional banks the, the fiscal challenges in terms of the states um, does that lead you to the conclusion that we're going to see a double dip broadly in the economy or are you just looking state by state um, I've avoided saying double dip on the economy because anything can happen. But imagine the what I, I can tell you what will happen. So you've got 36 governor seats up for a, a, a election um, in November. I think that the pressures on um, politicians now to make decisions either do they bail states out, so do you increase the federal de deficit, um, do you cut programs? Something's got to give. So if you cut programs, you increase unemployment. If you bail out the states, you weaken. In the U.S. balance sheet, so uh, nothing's nothing's easy. What's more important is on a bailout of the state basis. Imagine you're a conservative, uh, fiscally sound Nebraskan, and now you have to bail out California, or you're a fiscally conservative Texan, and now you have to bail out right. um, you know, Michigan. Sounds I mean, like Goldman gonna... Sachs bailing out Lehman. Right. <laughs> I mean, there's going to be, that, if, on that if you hate bankers, weekend. you're going to hate uh, politicians. Yeah. When do you expect some of these layoffs to happen? In your report, the last report when you were on the show, you said up to 40,000? 80,000. 80,000 cuts in the financial services industry? Yeah, and I met what, the U.S., by the way. Just the U.S. When do you think this starts to happen? I think that the bonuses are going to be really, really bad in the um, uh, at year end. And so they'll help, they'll, the, they'll hope for some um, attrition on that basis, people just leaving saying this is not worth it. After that, that they'll have fire. I would think you'll see uh, layoffs certainly in the first quarter. First quarter of, of 2011. So, do you think that's priced into the market at this point? No. Or do you think the market trades down on that information? Um, well, look, it's going to be a situation of negative operating leverage where the, the, the banks themselves don't create any momentum in terms of earnings momentum so that you want to own them. Um, I think that what the sad reality is that the financials just don't have a lot of bright spots in the future and there's there's not a lot of investment potential at the moment. Is there any area of this market that you would buy? Um, I like Visa and MasterCard because they are you know, incredible margin uh, companies. They're like technology companies. They're like technology <laughs> companies. They don't need uh, they don't need capital. Um, it's truly a, a, a duopoly, and I think that they have been grossly um, uh, overpunished from the Durban uh, Durban bill. So those are those are easy names. They haven't been easy names shown lately, but they're easy business models to understand and excellent business models. Meredith.